Hey everybody, uh, I just want to go ahead and make a video on kind of a tutorial of the run because no one's really made a video kind of explaining everything. So I, I, I know a lot of people got into the run watching uh, Harpus video and uh, different videos just kind of putting together their own strategies. But I just wanted to uh, make a video of everything that I do and if you see somebody do something else, obviously there's uh, different ways to do it, but I want to go ahead and get started, but I'll kind of explain everything as I go. So, uh, the least speed run starts, uh, obviously, in New Game, and there's a big long cutscene, and I'll kind of explain everything as it goes. So, there's going to be a lot of text smashing. So, at the beginning here is a bunch of text. Uh, I play on an Xbox controller. Uh, I've been told it's easier to mash text on PC, so I have no idea if it's actually easier, so you just have to try and see for yourself. But if you're learning, I I guess I recommend PC, uh, or keep mouse and keyboard. So most of the beginning is just getting through the cutscenes. Uh, after it starts, I'll kind of talk about uh, little minor adjustments and things like that. So you want to be holding right here, because we need to walk all the way to Brad's house. Uh, if you're watching this and you haven't played the game casually, I highly recommend playing it casually, because there's a bunch of this game that we don't see in the run. And there's a bunch of characters that are really cool, and we don't get to see any of them. Um, so we're going to walk past all these houses, because they're all locked. Uh, and we're going to go all the way to Brad's house. Don't walk past his house if you can help it. <laughs> so he stops you right here. Uh, you can just keep holding right and you'll walk right into this text. So you want to go upstairs and right into the room. Uh, you can go past it and uh, it's not really any fast way to do it, just kind of gotta mash. So as you probably know, Whis is on a, uh, a grid-based system. You can't walk like very little uh, movement. There's there's specific spaces you can stand on. So if you press one to the right, you're always going to go the same amount of like one block over. So it's easier to once you start moving to the space that you're uh, wanting to put input an action on to start inputting that next action because it's not going to stop you it's going to do it when the first chance comes up to do it so if I'm trying to walk into a door um, I start it when it's going on to the space the door is all right through, through this cutscene, we can just be holding left because we're going to immediately start walking to the left when this text is done. And same thing, you're just going to walk right into the next text box, so you can just start mashing whenever he stops. Alright, once the screen starts fading, you can just stop and 
there's really no inputs for another like four minutes or something like that. I mean, I guess a plus of the run is you can go to the bathroom after you start it, just like four minutes in, you get a nice like four minute break. I'll also be talking in the run about like possible changes if you're starting to run and you run into places where you can't um, keep your health up and you want to go get more items or you want to kind of use your magazines to leverage um, healing items and stuff like that that you can kind of go out of your way to get additional resources if you don't feel comfortable just starting with what you have but um, a lot of the resources like diesel fire bombs TNT uh, even magazines until like area three you that we re-ration them really tightly so that we can get certain items Like uh, of the party members we're gonna get we're not gonna upgrade any of their equipment except for at the very end um, There's really no need to but like if you're like having trouble on uh, doing like the Wally fight fast or something like that or doing uh, certain sections you can you can go get uh, additional items like um, like in area three I'll talk about it later but if your party member is down and you don't have a uh, perfume you can go to Chester which is in like the, the crossroads area and get another revive so um, it's better than most of the time than resting because you have so many random rations. Um, I'm also going to be talking uh, using a lot of verbiage like uh, if you know the game, like random rations, like if you don't know what they do um, because you haven't played the game, then um, they refill all of your HP and all of your SP. So you want to use them when they're low on both. Um, you'll pick up a, a couple additional items, but so when you hear the dog bark, it's kind of the sign that the run's starting. Um, once you master Terry's text, you wanna, the first thing you wanna go do is uh, go into settings and turn off battle animations and turn on instant text. It's gonna make the game a ton faster. And battle animations are really annoying because if you see Terry fall on his head a bunch of times, it's gonna be really annoying. Uh, next thing you're gonna do is immediately just joy Brad because we just want this fight to be over with really fast. Um, and you also, when you press items, you immediately just keep pressing A and you go right to Joy and right to Brad. So it's really fast. So it doesn't matter what you press in this fight, so I just continually mash A. Um, here's the biggest run killer. You want to press cancel. Cancel actually can mash through text as well. And you. Uh, when you are faced with a text box with two choices, if you press cancel, you're going to pick the second choice. So in this, in this case, the second choice is pay in normal mode, which is what I want to play in. So we're just matching here, and Terry's eventually going to join our party. So start holding left, and we'll hit this way. Uh, we want to pick up these two bottles. There's two more bottles right here, but these two are the ones, just the ones that I pick up. Um, as far as saving goes, I normally don't save um, in the beginning here, uh, just because until you get to the Charmy fight, there's really no reason to save because you're probably going to reset. 
Uh, also, don't walk off the edge there, because if you didn't save, you're gonna have to restart and watch that cutscene again. Uh, no reason to rest here, because we don't have anybody that's injured. So just keep holding left, and this kind of automatically, this cutscene automatically starts playing. So we want to go to the right. Um, no reason to grab any items in this area because you're going to be faced with a choice if you want to sacrifice uh, Terry or, sacrif or sacrifice all your items. And we're going to sacrifice all of our items, so there's no reason to do anything here. Um, so before this fight, I joy. Um, this guy right uh, before this fight right here just because uh, I'll explain a little bit it's easier for the menuing so in this fight uh, again um, we picked up bottles but those bottles aren't for this fight I'm just gonna keep mashing a and there's just we did learn uh, buster punches in that first fight so if you want to press uh, the button combinations for buster punches uh, learning these these button combinations are going to get a little bit, yeah, kind of get, get used to it, uh, because like in different sections, based on how many, much experience everybody's had, you're going to learn different abilities. Um, like you got to remember when um, when Brad learns different fireball moves, which one is the the highest level, so that you can you can use it. So we're going to hop up here, um, skip that fight with that guy right there. Um, because it just takes a little bit longer, and even though we take damage here, uh, it's a little bit faster. So we're just continue, continue moving through the intro area. Fall off this ledge because it's a little bit faster than uh, climbing down the ladder, and uh, most of the time it is quicker to fall down a ledge, especially when it's like three to four blocks, instead of taking uh, ropes on, until we have the bike, and then it's a little bit faster. So here again, we're going to give joy to Brad. It also heals him fully, so if he was ever damaged in the last fight. So here, we're going to uh, attack with Brad and then immediately go throw this empty bottle. So this fight is two turns if we throw bottles with Terry. If not, it's like three turns. So again, we're going to attack and throw a bottle. Um, like I said, um, I used Joy before the second fight because um, I didn't have any Joy in my inventory. So when I went to items, the first item my menu was on was uh, was bottles. So I'm just going to continually press A so I don't have to menu through over to empty bottles. And there's no reason to pick up any more than two because it wastes time. So we're going to keep going. Get hit by this guy. Continue to math through his text. So, uh, again, like we did before, we're going to press uh, B to master this text. He also gives you the visual cue of him jumping before he gives you this choice. Uh, we want to press cancel, so we press, uh, so we go to all of the all of your belongings. So we're going to go over and talk to Terry. So we're just going to hold right. Um, this body explodes. You can actually stand two spaces away. Um, it has a little awkward hitbox, so if you start moving into the area before the complete animation is done, you're still going to get hit by it, which really sucks. We're going to skip the, uh, the first uh, tent because uh, we're going to come back to it. Uh, 
here we're gonna mash through because uh, Brad's the only thing that needs to attack to kill this guy. So right now you may see that Terry's low on HP. If he is, that's okay because we can heal him in just a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is enter the second door and grab this hidden cigarette right here because we're gonna sell it in just a second. So we're gonna climb down. I wanna climb down here because I wanna save a little bit of health and we're gonna come over here. You especially want to save health if Terry's low, because every time you fall, it's 10 damage to your whole party. So if 10, if Terry's really low, you want to make sure that you don't kill him. So here, uh, it's fastest to go to the go to the right and fall off the ledge. But again, if Terry's low, then you may have to take a different route. I, I've seen uh, that uh, the last guy in the first area KO Terry or get him really low. So what we want, the first thing we want to do is buy one potato liquor because of the mags we picked up earlier. If we didn't pick those up, we'd only have four and we wouldn't be able to buy this. So then we're going to leave. Hop up here and go to this house and mash through this text and you'll give him the potato liquor and get 50 mags. Pick up this bottle that we'll use. Bottles are going to be really important because you need um, some for fire bombs later. You make sure make sure you have enough to get all the fire bombs. So we're going to continue heading right and go meet Buzzo to get our um, our first uh, joy since we got all of ours taken away. So we're going to sell that cigarette we picked up to Chester right there, but we also have to pick up another one in just a second, so we're going to do it on the way back. So we want to enter the left door here because during this cutscene it it, um, it, pl it places you on the right door so that when you exit you're just one step ahead. It's not too much faster, but you know, why not? We're gonna head over here and hop up, grab this cigarette. Uh, to the right is the, uh, the the dojo, I think. So I don't think there's anything over there that really matters. So up here's Chester, and you're gonna get pretty fast at menuing. And the more you play the game, you uh, go over to sell and. Uh, sell your cigarettes you just picked up. Make sure you don't sell any joy or it's going to be really tough. And again, I still haven't saved yet because there's really been no hard fights. So uh, here we're going to pick up the soup. Now this is the point where if, uh, if Terry's a little low, I usually give him the soup right now and just pick up another one because it's kind of free. Because uh, we don't heal until after the Charmy fight. So we're going to come up here to pick up these three bottles. Uh, I think these fall damage is also free, so it's not like you're being damaged. Uh, and here we're going to fall on this guy because the other guy gives us a perfume. Which perfumes are pretty rare in the route, so if you do get them it's pretty important. Uh, because later on we can perfume someone in Rando Rash and get them to, to max. So again, we're going to hop up here uh, with the mags we got from selling the, um, the cigarettes. We're going to buy our two party members. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you, which order you get them in, uh, just whatever you prefer as far as menuing goes. Uh, for Olan, you just uh, keep mashing uh, accept and it'll just accept it. And same for Rage. So we're going to hop up here and uh, we see that uh, Punkert is now transformed, so we're going to give joy to Brad and do this fight. So, like I said, um, a lot of the battles are based on turns, so we're going to want to keep uh, keep it as few turns as we can. And if something doesn't speed up the number of turns we're taking, it doesn't really matter. So we could do verbal bash, which I'll explain in just a little bit because we're going to do the charmy fight. Um, but we just want to keep mashing A because none of their attacks matter because Brad's doing so much damage at this point. 
And we're still doing Buster Punches because that's the only move he knows. Uh, Rage is uh, Head Rush, that's the only move he knows. It's always two turns as long as Brad gets to attack. He, he, uh, Punkert can scare your whole party, which is really, really frightening. Uh, but we're going to learn a bunch of moves here. Uh, and those are the moves that we're going to be using from now on. Um, I, I come over here and get this trash bag shawl because we're going to sell it later. Um, you don't have to get it, but it, it's kind of tough to ration out your mags if you don't pick it up. So here we get rushed by this guy. Uh, we can just escape. Like most of the time you can escape for free and he just disappears. Uh, I have had it before where you don't get to escape and you can just try again. And uh, escaping is based on your agility, so like if uh, the fastest person in your, in your party dies and your agility is lower, so you're going to escape less time, which is going to be really important for the upcoming area. So at this point is the point where you have to decide if you want to save or not. Um, you can come over here and save. I usually don't because it's so early on in the run. You're going to want to head back through this area, and this is the, the random area. Um, playing this game casually, you probably didn't have too hard of a time fighting these snakes, but they're really tough when you're only like level 6 and 5. So we're going to hope we don't fight any of them. That's kind of like cross your fingers and, and hope you don't fight them. Uh, try to pick up this fancy perfume. It just like makes this area a lot easier when somebody gets down because you're just not going to use any abilities. And we're just going to keep trying to run. And uh, most of the time, the reason we fight Joey Mutants uh, if they're not in our direct path, is because they drop joy, uh, which is the reason we bite Punkert. Um, this guy, uh, you can see him in the grass when you come by. Um, you don't have to fight him, but he gives a bunch of experience, which is kind of helpful, and he doesn't take that long to fight. So, uh, like you can literally just press anything with rage, and he'll, he'll die in one hit. So we're gonna keep going. It's really good if you get to escape on the first try, it's usually what you're looking for. So, uh, this campfire right here I've rested at before, just if your party just gets decimated, um, you can rest here, and if nothing happens, I'll, I'll, we may rest later on in the run and I might show you different things that can happen, but um, if nothing happens and your party doesn't get poisoned or sto stuff gets stolen or party members get stolen, you can just continue on, because it takes like probably like eight seconds to, to rest. So, Brad's not joyed anymore, so we're going to give some some joy. Uh, we're also going to use our um, bo uh, our bu cup of soup to uh, give it to whoever is low at this point. So this is the tough fight. It's not yeah, it's not too bad, but so we want to fight with Brad. Um, so Terry is going to use his one good ability, which is verbal bash, which is hopefully going to inflict uh, pissed and crying which uh, crying makes them less likely to hit things. Um, pissed makes them uh, more likely to crit, but can hit anyone, including themselves, which is what we're going to hope for. And if they, he crits himself, then it makes the fight like two turns faster, which is normally what we're looking for. Uh, Olan, uh, he uses a TP system, so the more he gets hit, the more energy he has. Uh, you just want to use whatever, has, whatever ability he has the most TP to use. So, Rage's move at this point is WASD, does the most damage, and Brad's move is Dropkick, which is uh, DWWS. And we're just going to keep doing that cycle. Uh, if he is, if uh, Charmy is ever affected by uh, Pissed, we can just attack with Terry, because there's no, re no reason to inflict anything else. Crying is good. It makes him not less likely to hit you, which is like most of the time it's one hit kill. Although uh, joy makes you um, um, joy makes you uh, take less damage. Um, we're gonna continue to use verbal bash because he's not affected by piss, and that's what we really want. I guess I didn't explain joy. Um, the fundamental thing of joy is you. Uh, every move is a crit. 
um, you are like I think it's hundred percent to, to, to accuracy to hit that doesn't mean you always hit because the enemy can evade and uh, you take less damage which is really important Sometimes he just won't attack, so that's just kind of fighting a joy mutant. It's just kind of random. Um, the worst thing most of the time joy mutants can do is they can scare you or like uh, make it so somebody can't attack, which is is kind of annoying. We just keep doing what we're doing. You also got to make sure you watch um, how much SP everyone uh, everyone has so that they can um, figure out what moves they should do. Like, uh, Brad here can't do his drop kick because he doesn't have enough SP, so I'm just going to do something else. Sometimes you just got to press buttons and, and, and hope you do something else. See, he hit himself because he was pissed. Or I think he is. No, he's not. He just hit himself. And we're just going to keep going. This is a pretty bad fight. Well, we got through it, so most of the time what we're looking for is like four or five turns at most. That was pretty bad, but uh, in a regular one, I'd probably restart, but we're just going to keep going. So we're going to jump up here, grab the bike. Um, when we equip the bike, you can access the menu from moving from items, press the left and go to key items, and it's the only thing you have. Um, so now that we have the bike, we can cross these one gaps. So we want to, we can still jump up and down stuff. So we're just going to keep going. I've also rested after this fight because if a lot of your party members are down, you can, uh, you can die on the, on the way back. And that feels even worse than dying on the way there. Um, just remember that fancy perfume refills all of your health and perfume refills um, a percentage so you want to revive the people who have the most health if you're just looking to get through the last uh, coming back so here we're gonna hop over here and use the save area um, uh, like I said when you use a bonfire um, sometimes you uh, have a chance of bad things happening to you uh, these this tent is a almost free area we may see uh, what happens if we do something bad we didn't there's a 33% chance that you get hit over the head uh, uh, coming out of that tent. And it doesn't really do anything bad. It decreases your luck in things, which just, just doesn't matter. So that's why we take the rest. So uh, if you used your cup of soup on the um, going to Charmy or coming back, we want to grab one for a skip coming up. So now I have one cup of soup. So the next area... Um, as you might know, playing casually is the hair club. So we're gonna want to go through that third door and try to fight this guy. Uh, and we can again try to escape from him. Apparently, uh, again, like the other guy that charged at you, a lot of these human enemies, if you run from them or can run from them, they'll just disappear. So. Just kind of follow my route here as I go up, and this is the, the easiest way to get to this area. And this this one gap is the reason we couldn't come here beforehand. So these guys are always the same when you come into the screen. You're just always going to have the same movement. So for some reason, when you do um, when you jump on top of those guys. They don't have a hitbox when you land on them, only if you run left or right into them or they roll into you. So you can jump onto that guy and just keep going. Um, here we fell down this ledge to save a little bit of time instead of climbing down all these ropes. We're gonna miss this guy and keep going. Uh, uh, right here I'll explain the, um, the rope bike glitch. It's really the only glitch in the run. Uh, and you probably saw if you've seen any of the other runs. If you press dismount, which on controller is select, I think on PC it's uh, or on keyboard it's shift, uh, and you dismount your bike, 
at the same time if you're exiting a ladder which it's not like frame perfect or anything uh just do it while you're doing the animation of getting off of a ladder you'll get off the the ladder but you'll still maintain the speed that you're on the bike so the game thinks that you're on the bike but you're not so you can climb ropes as fast as you would just going left and right so it's really helpful in long rope climbing sections or mostly basically all the time if you can ever get it the only thing is that if you mess it up it wastes a little bit and uh, you have to get off of a rope or onto it um, I find it's easier normally getting off of a rope on the top but it's it's just in a, whatever you want to do I uh, hear um, this guy's gonna hit you and if you're on the bike you get knocked off if you're using that glitch you get slowed down again so we're gonna get back on the bike Again, because we're dropping down on ledges, dropping down off of ledges, which you take less damage if you're on the bike. So we want to get up and avoid that guy, and we're going to come over here and fight him. Hey, it happened! <laughs> if you you can actually miss that fight. I don't know if you, you that happened to you casually. You can actually miss the 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 scripted punch or the scripted kick, and he still dies. So I haven't had that happen like probably like 20 runs, but that's really funny. So he dies no matter what, even if you miss the attack. I want to keep going. Uh, mash through this text here. So this guy is pretty easy, but um, as you see, Brad's in withdrawal, so he's not going to do very much damage. Uh, withdrawal happens most of the time when you rest. It can happen other times. Uh, the big red flash when we're in the overworld is uh, somebody getting withdrawal. So we're attacking with Brad, but most of the time not going to do anything. Uh, we're just going to use whatever moves we can. We don't want to use a um, uh, verbal bash because it doesn't really matter. So Brad learned the machine gun fist, which is kind of your kind of your bread and butter physical move. So um, machine gun fist uses not a lot of TP or not a lot of SP, and does a decent amount of damage. Probably the best for a physical move. So you just want to keep on uh, using that if you can. So the move we're looking for Rage to get is, um, uh, it's a tackle, I think it's running tackle, let me see. Uh, running splash, so that's the move, that's a move that, uh, does fall in. So if you're ever trying to get through a fight super fast, uh, and want them not to act, which is going to be helpful in the hair club fight, you can, uh, use running, uh, running splash. So we're going to pick up this bottle. Again, the bottles are really important. Uh, this is normally the first time I save. Just because it's, it's so convenient, it's in your path. We missed the uh, bicycle glitch, but it doesn't really matter. So before we um, fight these guys, we're going to use Joy. Uh, if you get up on top and move one space over, he'll move directly to where he is right now. So you want to use the Joy while you're on the rope or you'll forget. So this fight's pretty random. Um, you have t two people that you can t attack. Uh, you want everyone to attack the person, which is the, the thing that can that can hurt, uh, actually do damage to the boss. Uh, fighting the hare, you actually can kill the hare and not kill the boss, so it's a little bit slower. Uh, so we want to attack with Brad. Uh, when we verbal bash, we want to use, attack the hare, because the hare is the thing doing the damage. Um, so we're gonna we, we can also inflict fall in on the on the on the people, which is uh, gonna make the fight a little bit faster. So uh, again, Brad's gonna use machine gun fist. So Terry inflicted pissed on the hair, which is gonna be really helpful because uh, we're gonna see on this next move uh, the hair is just gonna attack someone for a bunch of damage, and it could be itself, which is what we're hoping for. So now that it is pissed, we're just going to attack. It doesn't matter. Terry doesn't do any damage anyway. So 
see it hit itself. So that's what we're hoping for. So that was great, it hit itself. So that's basically the optimal uh, fight if you were like butt mashing or trying to get through it fast. That was a little slow just because I was menuing. So here again, we're going to have a text box with two options. We want to press cancel to do the second option. It's a lot faster than scrolling down. So we're going to go to this gang, uh, gang poster, which helps us uh, reorientate our party. Um, here we're going to equip uh, Farty. We're going to take out Terry. Terry doesn't get used anymore. Um, I usually uh, let Owen die. It doesn't matter at all. It's just a preference. Uh, I just like Rage better. I don't know. So, again, we need the bike to get over this area. Uh, you can save again if you want, uh, but we're going to have a chance to save in a little bit. So we're going to stay on the bike here because it's going to be uh, easier in just a little. So up here, we're going to come in here. That music's really loud. But uh, grab the magazines uh, again because magazines are really tight. Uh, so we're going to use them to buy some stuff in area two. So we want to stay on the bike because of that fall. Uh, it makes it a little bit faster. And again, these guys are uh, always the same when you come into the screen. So they're always going to be in the same place. immediately go up to this rope and grab the fancy perfume which is really helpful and we're gonna head back the way we came and head into area two so fall down and grab that bottle uh, just to it's right on our way and it's easy to get uh, these magazines uh, are another thing that I grab Uh, we're gonna come over here and use the spigot. You can do it before or after the hair club. It doesn't really matter. But so this is the reason we have so many bottles right now because we need four of them to fill up uh, this. So you can get there's two options here. You can get dirty water and clean water. So we got two dirty bottles, two two dirty, two clean, which is kind of like the average. I think it's 50-50. Clean water we can sell for 10 mags, which is uh, really useful. And then dirty water, uh, if you throw it, it inflicts poison, which one boss is really weak to poison, which is rando. Uh, after we come out of here, you just immediately press right. You can go over here and uh, get into this cutscene and get the, uh, the, the truck keys. So we want to avoid that car. We're going to hop down this, uh, this rope, avoid this guy, and we can immediately keep pressing uh, right and skip him. So this is the reason I uh, grabbed the cup of soup earlier. If you, um, if you pause when he's running at you and use anything that uses a bottle, you can use a bottle of water if you're really desperate. But we picked up the cup of soup because of this. And give it to anyone, it doesn't really matter because uh, we're going to rest up here. It skips that fight for some reason. Uh, it looks like the dirty, uh, the uh, you got an empty bottle text skips that fight. So we're going to rest here, uh, even though our party's almost fully alive, because this is the only 100% free resting spot in the game. Even the first one, you have a chance of something bad happening. This one is free no matter what. So we save here again because it's along the way. Uh, and we're going to joy farty so that um, you'll see in just a sec. Uh, most of the time, you'll know if you're playing casually that farty's abilities don't hit very often, which joy makes all of your abilities hit 100% of the time. So it doesn't matter what anyone else does here. I usually just mash. Uh, the only thing we want to make sure we do is we use truck slam on farty. He's going to do a lot of the damage. So 
so that 3000 is all farty uh, because truck slam hits for a bunch of damage but has like a like a 40 or 50 percent chance of hitting most of the time and it just does a ton of damage when it crits The only, yeah, the only reason I'm attacking with everyone else there doing certain moves is because of that situation right there, where usually that turn is that uh, fight is three turns, and Farty does the last amount of damage. Uh, for uh, if your numbers are really good doing a bunch of damage, uh, it's just random. You can't do anything about it. But um, uh, Brad and uh, Brad, uh, Owen, and Rage do enough damage to end the fight one turn sooner. So Farty has a chance of having one more turn of joy, which doesn't matter a whole lot, but can matter uh, in this next fight if someone uh, evades. Which I've had it happen before, and if I had had that particular case happen, then it would be helpful. We're going to hold right during that cutscene and just immediately... Uh, Grab Percy, which is going to be a member of our new party. Um, here we find uh, a Rick. Um, when we get into this cutscene, you lose the momentum from the, the bicycle glitch, so it doesn't really matter if you do it or not. So we're just going to keep holding right. So we're just going to mash through this cutscene. So, if you know from playing this casually, um, we're going to beat him up and we need to pick up the spike club that's sitting right there. Um, you'll kind of know from the visual cue of Brad being right in front of him right there that you're about to end this uh, cutscene. Uh, when he says, do your worst, is when you gain motion of Brad. So you want to immediately go over and get the spike club. If you don't, you're going to start punching him and it doesn't do anything. So just waste time. <laughs> We're just gonna keep mashing A. I think at some point this, uh, like the cutscene takes over and he just starts hitting him. I don't know when that happens because I haven't tried it. So I just keep mashing. It also feels good. Just let it all out. Uh, this is one of the few screens in the game you can't pause on, so you can't get on your bike immediately after that cutscene. So you just want to walk out of the screen and then get on your bike. So the reason we put Owan in the second spot is because we want to sacrifice him here to Buzzo. Because it'd be really, it would really suck to get our arm chopped off so early in the game. Uh, unlike the first ultimatum with uh, uh, the other guy, there's no visual cue that he's about to give you a choice. So if you keep mashing A, you're going to lose your arm. So it pays to kind of go through this slowly until you know what he's, uh, you do it a bunch of times and know what he's saying. So um, this choice gives you three options, so we can't just press B to select anything. It doesn't do anything. So here we have to talk to this guy. Uh, we want to get on the, the motorcycle. Uh, uh, the guy tells you that if you press uh, confirm or A or whatever the, the button is, you do a wheelie. And you're going to want to do that while you're to, to go up ramps. But if you do that over a rock, you fall off. So you just kind of got to learn the learn the, the route. Uh, it's never any different, so you, you didn't see that. But uh, you just kind of got to learn it.
Also, um, I don't know if I said, I'm sorry if it's, if it's a lot of information, I've been playing this game so much, I may just kind of ramble on about things that don't really matter and things that you may just discover as you play. But I want to kind of be, uh, kind of be diligent, I guess you could say. So this whole cutscene, you don't have to do anything. Or most of the time, you I mean, you have to master the text, but once he gets past you, you don't have to do very much. So again, the reason we uh, joined Farty is because of this fight right here. So we're one character down, which would be really tough most of the time. But um, we want to guard with uh, Brad and Rage because they doesn't really matter if they do anything, and we're gonna truck slam everyone else. Worst case scenario is that Farty could die from those four hits because they're all faster than you. So that's the reason uh, you want to have an extra turn of the fight because he can evade even if you have 100% accuracy. I've had this happen to me one time before. So everything that could happen in like 1 in 20 chances apparently is happening in this run. So we're going to go ahead and fight. He has a little bit of health, but like it's not that much. We don't need to save any abilities or SP or do anything like that. It doesn't waste too much time, but it's just kind of annoying. So, get on the bike. Uh, this is one of the few areas where it's very important you save, because uh, it's very it's not unlikely that your run just ends right here and you have to continue on from there. So, as um, most of you know, you have to do Russian roulette with your party at this point. So, the fastest uh, thing to do is go right to Farty. He's the closest one. Uh, we also don't need any... The only person that we need to stay alive through uh, Russian roulette is, um, is Percy. So we have more than a 50% chance of winning. And again, we're just going to keep going to Farty. Uh, it doesn't really matter who you sacrifice, if you want to sacrifice Rage or Farty. But uh, Farty is the closest person in the little selection. I guess a little note is that Olan is a little bit farther than Rage. So if you're being really optimal, sacrificing Olan is a little bit faster. So that was, that was the best we could do. We get a 3-0. So, I'm going to go over here and pick up this bottle. Uh, it's just kind of a safety bottle. I don't remember if you actually have to pick it up or not. I usually do. Uh, grab this horse jerky. Uh, you can either sell it or it's just useful in general. We want to come down to the bottom of the screen and come over here because it's a little bit faster than jumping down all of those cliffs after this cutscene. So, even before the screen's done scrolling over to you, you can start moving. Um, here we're going to go assemble our new party. Uh, this is the door to um, to the, the dojo area, or whatever it's called. Um, and this is the way we want to go. Again, we're seeing the, uh, the road glitch being really useful here for climbing these long ropes. It take a little bit longer. Uh, the only bad thing is that Sometimes you like go through this door and you just don't remember and you fall off the edge. Because that's happened to a lot of us. Um, up on top of this dojo is a uh, cigarette which we need to sell to, uh, for this next little bit right here. So here we're going to sell a lot of our things. You may ask why because we need to get the playing cards and the weird doll. Uh, in total, that's 233, 32 mags. So 
you need to sell a bunch of stuff to get it, which is why we picked up uh, the trash bag shawl, uh, why we picked up uh, horse jerky, why we picked up um, bottles of water. Um, so this is the point where you want to to you say, what can I sell other than that? Uh, if you ever run out of uh, things to sell at this menu, uh, you have to you sell rando rations. Rando rations are important, but you don't need eight of them. Uh, for the run at least. So right now we only have to sell one of them because we got two bottles of clean water. And, and obviously Rando rations are better than horse jerky and they sell for the same amount. So we're going to go buy uh, playing cards and the weird doll. Uh, another thing you can buy uh, if you're feeling like you don't want something else, you can buy lucrative tea um, because it refills birdies TP. Uh, which is going to be important for the Wally fight and uh, maybe a couple of other fights. So if you really feel uncomfortable, you can sell like one other thing and get a lucrative tea. Because uh, rando rations don't fill TP. So we're going to immediately go up here and sell the um, the weird doll to this guy and get the uh, Olafian whiskey. So here's Jack, we can just mash through this cutscene. Um, like you saw, um, for some reason getting a party member takes off of your takes off your rope glitch and you just have to do it again. So uh, in this area, as far as the routing goes, we get both Jack and Birdie, which is just like the most optimal way we can do this. Uh, I'm sure there are other, uh, I think uh, uh, Mad Dog has a, um, has a fireball ability that would be useful, but it takes a long time to get to his area and actually do his his quest line or give him his spike club because you have to go back to area one. So now that we got um, Jack and, and Birdie, go up to this gang sign, and this is the point where you can put them in any order you want. Uh, I usually do Jack, uh, Percy, uh, Birdie, and then Percy. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we're going to truck keys back to area two because it's a little bit faster than going all the way back up and back down. And we're right next to the door we want to go in. Um, I wouldn't save right here. This area is not too difficult. Um, I might save before you go to the Wally fight because that fight is difficult. But there's also a save right before Wally. There's only one fight in between the Wally, uh, the, the main area, and getting to Wally. So again, these guys are always on the same pattern when you enter the screen. So you just kind of gotta learn the way. Uh, dodging these hammers doesn't really matter because you're, uh, they only do like 10 damage. Uh, that guy, this guy I'm fighting right now is the hardest one to dodge because he. Um, Because he just moves so fast, but if you're running on, if you're doing the rope glitch, and you move on the same frame that he starts moving, you can get up that that uh, the rope in the middle there and dodge him. It's really really difficult. This guy's also hard to dodge if you're not on the uh, bike, because you, if you're on the bike, you would go one space further. These these guys have a thousand health. So most of the time, uh, the, the birdie, or the jack fireball and the Percy fireball will kill them. I'll also, I guess I'll explain on the next fight what your, um, your basic combo is with your party now that you have, uh, your, like, end game party. Kinda gotta remember where these guys stop. You just kinda wait for them. So here we're gonna do a little equipment optimization. Um, uh, right now, uh, as we saw a little bit earlier, Percy is attacking sooner than Birdie. Birdie is applying the oil up debuff, which increases fire damage. So we want Percy to attack later. 
So the ability, the uh, stat we want to change is agility. And the old sock gives a bunch of agility, as you see, which is the only thing it does. So we want to unequip that and just weave it. Um, uh, as you see, Birdie has an old sock, and we, there's nothing we can do to, to make him faster. So we get in the uh, we get in the bulldozer and do this section. Uh, this is another section where you can't press pause. Um, there has been cases where something happens and you can press pause, and if you um, get on the bike during this section, you move faster. So I still haven't figured out how that works yet. Uh, if anyone wants to look into it, that would be really helpful because the section isn't the fastest. Here you're just going to mash uh, enter or space or whatever your confirm button is. So this is another pretty long cutscene, we're just gonna keep mashing. Also please uh, let me know on the, uh, on the, I'm gonna be posting this on YouTube and the, uh, the speedrun forums. Uh, if this was helpful at all, I don't, I don't know if this is actually helpful. You know, I could be just rambling on to myself. But um, yeah, uh, again, uh, if you want to start running run the game, I highly recommend it, it's really fun. Uh, there's no like super interesting tricks or anything like that, but it's really just kind of a cool RPG. There's, I mean, menuing and, and doing all that stuff really fast is kind of satisfying. There's no, there's not a lot of RNG, so it feels really satisfying to get good. Um, so our main um, kind of combo is if Brad's joined, we're gonna just do physical attacks like uh, machine gun punches. If Brad is uh, not joined, and we're gonna be using fireball attacks. Um, so, Jack is basically always going to do trick card. That is his, basically his only move you'll ever do. Uh, Birdie uh, uses the TP system, which uh, TP is if you get hit, you're going to gain more, you, you gain TP over time. There's no way to gain more TP, so you just have to keep doing it. Although Birdie has an ability to swig, that's his basic attack, and he just gains more TP. Um, the the move that he's going to be using most of the time, although he use, will use uh, a couple different moves if you if you have extra TP, um, is gasoline spirit and it uh, gasoline spit and it uh, it does the debuff blind and oil up. Blind makes you hit less and oil up makes you uh, weak to fire, which fire is basically the only thing our team does. But right now he doesn't have enough, so we're just going to swig. And Birdie's going to use fireball. So, this is kind of how you do it fast. So, because we took Birdie's old sock off, he's attacking slower than Birdie. Or because we took Percy's old sock off, Birdie's attacking sooner than Percy, which is going to uh, be easier to apply the debuff. So, this is another Birdie's ability, Secret Stash. It's kind of like the interchangeable ability with uh, Gasoline Spit, because you can't apply oil up more than once. Uh, 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 toast with me, or whatever it is, um, increases all of your health, which is really useful. You can also use um, gasoline spit um, earlier than you than the person has a um, has lost their debuff because um, characters lose debuffs after they've gone in combat or use their turn. So uh, if the enemy is faster than you, they're gonna lose their debuff before you start attacking. So you want sometimes you want to use gasoline spit even if they're already um, stat uh, affected by um, the status. So here we're going to use all the bottles that we gathered before to pick up four diesel fire bombs. It's really important that you have four bottles at this point. Because if you don't, it's going to make the run really, really difficult. 
and this TNT. So, uh, maybe in a casual run, you, you may have used a lot of the TNT on different uh, areas, just accessing them. The only one we need to access is the Wally fight. It's the only required area in, in this place, other than, than the construction, because we need to get the TNT. So we're going to head up here, use TNT on this door, and start using the rope glitch to get down here faster. So, whatever you do, this is this is the most important part. Don't walk off this ledge. I have like 10 videos in my in my capture that just show me walking off that ledge just so I can remember. Uh, we don't need to fight anybody in this area, so we're just going to continue to walk through. So just hold right so that we immediately start moving. And here we just pick the first two options because I think they're going to fight you anyway. Um, as we see, Brad uh, does, it has withdrawal, so he's not going to do much damage. So we want to do a fireball attack. Um, actually, I think what we want to do is most of the time I use Brad as the person who throws uh, diesel firebombs or TNT because he always attacks before after Birdie and Birdie uh, we're going to get our most amount of damage off something if a target is oiled up and then we throw TNT or firebombs. <laughs> so we're going to use item and we're going to go uh, diesel firebombs. So we're going to uh, start attacking one and oil up the others because oil up plus diesel firebomb is going to kill one of them and we just want to start attacking the other one. So oil up and then Brad's going to attack and it does a bunch of damage. So now we've already done a bunch of damage on the first one. So, uh, like you saw me there, um, paralysis is so a person can't attack. Um, just remember when you're menuing that a person is paralyzed, so you're going to skip their inputs because there I attacked with uh, Jack when I should have um, should have done fireball. Throw a fireball. <laughs> we uh, are just going to immediately run from these guys. Um, like 90% of the time we can run from them. Sometimes you get like can't escape, but just try it again. Oh, there you go. We got a cannon kit. 10% chance or whatever it is. Again, it's based on agility, so I don't think we have any way of calculating that. So, um, we're going to be fighting um, uh, Nuggy. So we want to start the fight by doing Brad. Um, we also want to go ahead and use our rando rations. At this point, uh, Percy is usually getting low on SP, so I use a rando ration on him. Um, we can use a rando ration on Brad later. It doesn't really uh, make a difference because he's going to be throwing a lot of firebombs in the next fight. So here we're just going to do this as fast as we can. There's, we don't want to use any of our TNT or anything like that. So we're going to keep on keeping on. And even though he's oiled up right now and Brad has a fire attack, since Brad is joyed, you don't want to use uh, fireball attacks because they don't crit yet. And I'll explain that in just a little bit. Uh, again, this fight's not too hard. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is you get scared or something like that. Uh, 
pretty unlikely, but again, everything happens in this game. So, here's a good place to save, because it's right before the Wally fight. The, 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 the fight with the two guys earlier on, uh, sometimes they can one hit kill you, which is the reason we have perfume still. Uh, we can pick up, we can use perfume and a random ration to just kind of revive someone instantly. Um, usually doesn't make too big of a deal. Um, one thing we can do though, is um, since we just saved, there's a campfire right here. Uh, if you're feeling really desperate, you can save your perfume or save your rando ration for and use this. And if somebody ever gets taken, you can restart or you can exit and continue and just try and do it until you get uh, nothing happens. And we're going to try to do the Wally fight. Try to do as best as I can. So uh, a lot of your decision making comes down to the first turn of the fight. Um, whether Birdie has enough TP to do Gasoline Spit, which is 10. Uh, he has 22 right now, which is awesome. He can start from anywhere from like like 3 or 4 to like 25. So we're going to attack with Brad. We're going to... Um, we're going to Rando Ration Brad. Um, we're going to Gasoline Spit him and Fireball. So, uh, Jack's the fastest person in our party. So if we're gonna start throwing fire bombs and uh, and, and uh, Wally is already oiled up, we want to use Brad because he attacks first. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, start using Fireball Two with Brad. Jack is going to throw his diesel fire bomb. Um, we're gonna swig with him and Fireball. I forget what that thing is. So, um, as we see Wally's face change, which is a phase change in the fight, um, there's a couple of bosses like this where they change anime, they change pictures. If a boss ever change images, they uh, lose all debuffs. So even though he was burning and oiled up, um, you have to reapply those whenever a uh, phase changes. So we're going to have to uh, redo that. So I'm going to use a TNT and uh, Gasoline Spit and Fireball, because Brad always attacks after. So, see, he did a bunch of damage because he was oiled up. So again, he changes phases, so we have to reapply oil up. was pretty gross but we can use a, a fancy perfume on him and we want to revive um, Brad because he, ha ha he he has to be alive for this next part or the game you game over so I'll explain that in a little bit so when we go into the like uh, the, the dream after we um, confront Buzzo uh, you lose your party members all, all except for Brad so if Brad is KO'd uh, Immediately when the game loads up, it just thinks you're dead, so it uh, game overs. So this is another save crow. You can save b before this fight, but there's really no reason to because there's only one fight later. Um, if you're scared about these spiders, they're always in the same spots. You just kind of got to learn their patterns. I don't know what just happened. Holy cow. Uh, that thing down there is a lucky feather and it doesn't really make a difference. So I usually just don't pick it up. Uh, I can't remember what's in that thing. And you definitely want to use the rope glitch for this area because that last spider right there I think is like impossible to dodge if you're using the bike.
Oh, by the way, that was a pretty good Wally fight. I don't know if I if I said, but um, if that was going fast, I would I would consider that a good Wally fight. So you want to grab Buddy's mask, and you'll immediately go into the door if you just keep holding right. So we're gonna mash through this text, and uh, I can't remember if we get Buddy into our party, like we can see her in our party, or whatever. But as soon as we walk out of here, we're gonna lose her. So right there we lose our party. So uh, this cutscene will play out, and if Brad's dead, we just game over after this cutscene, which has happened to me before. Yeah, this is gonna be a long video, but uh, thank you guys for watching. Whether you're watching this on YouTube or the Speedrun Archives. So during that blackness, we're going to keep holding right so that we move on the first frame that we can move. Um, we've lost all of our party members. Um, make sure that you get on your bike to make this a little bit faster. Um, actually, during that cutscene, when you show up in this area, you get a fresh amount of joy. So you want to make you don't want a joy before this next fight because you already have a fresh one. So in the sticky fight, what we're looking for is he can inflict weird. He can just stare at you and he can do a little bit of damage. Um, the damage that he does does add up, and if he just keeps attacking you, you may have to use a second joy. The, the best case is if he just stares at you, obviously. He can hit you a couple times, and it doesn't really matter. What you don't want to do is uh, use joy before this one runs out, because it's uh, you, you might be wasting one. You're going to have to use another joy in this fight, but just be aware that if he hits you a bunch of times, you don't want to joy before it's done. So, joy also heals you to full, so the good thing is that even if he hits you, you can refill. So he hasn't inflicted weird yet, which is basically the best thing you can ask for. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was awesome. Um, uh, weird, the status effect, um, decreases the amount of damage you do, uh, which is, like, basically just slows you down is all it does. So here we're going to truck keys back to area 2. Uh, this is the point where you have to decide if you're going to rest or not. Uh, my party's not too bad, so I'm just going to continue onward. Uh, you don't want to go and talk to those guys because they want to take your TNT, and if you don't give it to them, they fight you. So here we're going to climb up and over so that we can have all of our TNT to use on the next couple bosses. Here I pick up the rando poncho because it's a little bit better than the one Brad has right now. And you are going to be uh, using Brad for basically the whole game. You can also sell it if you want, but I don't think we need the mags. Also, if you're having problems with this fight, uh, if you still have Farty, you can actually joy him and then use him for this fight, and it makes it all, like basically just an instant win. So we're gonna attack, gonna use gasoline spit. Again, um, Brad's gonna do a bunch of damage, so I want to attack two different people to make sure I don't overkill someone. because he's still affected by joy from the, the, the dream. And as you see, these guys can do a lot of damage. So we want to make sure that we don't uh, 
die on this fight, although we can because we have a bunch of uh, perfume. We're gonna go ahead and use a random ration on Brad because he is uh, real low. So that's the bad thing if you've ever had that happen to you. If you ever down, if a person ever dies that you're trying to give an item to, it'll just use it on themselves. So that kind of sucks, but wait, what can you do? So again, if you're feeling really desperate, you can go back and um, and uh, rest to get your party back up. Uh, there's no fight between here and Area 3, so technically you could just rest in Area 3 now. That's the only fight between here and there. Okay. Um, falling off these ledges here do a bunch of damage, so make sure you check how, how you know how uh, healthy your party is before you can start jumping off ledges or your guys are just gonna die, which I've, I've had a bunch of that happen. So, here you're given the choice to kill Sticky and uh, Rick. Um, you want to just keep mashing confirm and then just kill them. Because if you don't, you obviously have to fight them later. Here you're going to get another rando uh, ultimatum. Um, you just keep pressing confirm and it'll be the first option is to cut off her nipple. So it doesn't do anything bad and uh, it's much better than killing your whole party. I don't even know why this is an option. And we even get another ultimatum which is um, lose all of our stuff, which would you know, obviously we can't do right now because we have a bunch of diesel fire bombs and TNT. Um, we're gonna get our choose to get our arm chopped off. And just keep mashing A. Which is actually not all bad. Like I said before, your fireballs don't crit yet. But for some reason, uh, once you've gotten your arm chopped off, your fireballs can crit. So they do a lot of damage when you're oiled up and on joy. So if, you're, if your party members are ever down here and you don't want to rest and you have it and you, and you just want to get uh, something else, uh, you can get perfume from Chester up there. Chester up. There. <laughs> so, um, we do have perfume at this point, so we're going to go ahead and give that to Brad. Um, we have a bunch of rando rations, and this next guy gives you a bunch, so we're just going to use them. And we don't need that many. So, this is the first area I do. You can do the areas in Area 3 uh, any order you want, uh, but, you know, it's all preference. Uh, th I do this one first because it gives you random rations. So, we're gonna just keep doing the thing. Yeah, he gives you three random rations, which is a bunch. So here, uh, the thing to remember is right, right, left, left, and uh, that's the order we need to go in. Uh, the best way to dodge these spiders is to go over and trigger their animation, come back, jump up, and jump over them. Um, if you're ever on the lower floor, or in the pool, or whatever it is, and you look up at a spider that's coming above you, 
it triggers its fight for some reason. I still haven't figured this out. And you can't run away from these guys. I have no idea why. So good thing we dodged the other fight. So what you want to immediately do is drop down to the, the lower level as soon as you get in this area. Or as soon as you go through the door so that you miss the, uh, the spider. This one's the hardest to dodge. Yeah, see? Things have cascaded. So through here is the boss battle. Just keep, just fight back. Um, what I do here is I usually uh, give Brad and uh, Jack the throwing a diesel firebomb in the TNT. So, uh, these guys are already all weak to fire, so you want Jack, who's your fastest party member, to throw a TNT because it kills most of them. And Percy can just attack uh, whoever you want, uh, the middle guy, because he's going to be alive still. See, none of them have attacked yet, so Jack gets to throw that fireball. Now Brad's throwing his diesel fire bombs. Uh, the the main guy's oiled up, and it's just gonna kill him. So that's the fastest way to do that fight. So now we're gonna truck back to area three. Also, when you truck, you lose your bike uh, glitch. Um, going into the uh, Hollywood area. There's really nothing you gain out of this area other than uh, Brad's uh, newest weapon, which is kind of useful, but you're not really using it that much. So... When you hop out of this window, I, uh, you want to make sure you're on the bike so you just don't take damage. I don't know why Jack's dead, but we'll fix that in just a sec. Now Jack's wearing Fireball 3, so you want to make sure you remember that now I stop doing Fireball 2 and start doing Fireball 3. So use a Perfume on him, and then use a Rando Russian. So first we're going to go to level 2, grab this horse jerky right here, and talk to Chester. So, um, most of the time you won't have to sell very much to get where you want to be. Um, you only need uh, 221 to buy this. Uh, I don't remember if there's anything else that helps. Um, yeah, not really. So, because Percy doesn't use the Burma Rain, we don't buy it. So that's really the only times you're going to use mags. So every other mag you can get, you can use on Perfume, you can use on the Lucrative Tea, or use on whatever you want if you want to make the fights a little bit faster. Uh, are a little bit safer, I should say. So we don't want to grab soup there because we need all of our bottles. I just jumped off there for no reason. Actually, me, on purpose, I don't know. Thank you. 
here we can pick up some more bottles. So we're gonna need some more for the for the, the last island. Uh, I usually save right there, just because this Hollywood fight's a little bit wonky. Sometimes it just takes forever, just because he just wants to survive for some reason. I don't know why he'd want to do that. So this fight's probably one of the most variance heavy fights where if your fight goes really well, it can be really short. So uh, we got the bad luck here and Birdie didn't start with enough TP to use uh, oil up. And the first move that uh, uh, Hollywood normally does is the super cool move which regenerates some health over time, which is gonna make it like one turn slower. So we're just gonna attack, uh, swig, just keep attacking. So, we're going to use a TNT, and since Percy and uh, Jack are attacking faster than Birdie, we don't want to use another TNT, because it's not going to do as much damage, we're not going to do the full damage. So, now that he's oiled up, uh, we want to use Jack as, to use the last TNT, because he's the fastest. If Birdie had started with enough TP, uh, that could have been a two-turn fight where um, Birdie would have used oil up, Brad would have used a TNT, and then the next turn, Jack would have used a TNT, and then the, t the fight would have been done. notification or something there. So we're going into the um, the Redwood fight, I think is his name. Um, again, this is a section that I forgot that was there. <laughs> but we're just going to climb down a bunch of ropes. So the pattern here is you want to go low, high, and low uh, to skip the most amount of fights. This is the only necessary fight we have to do in this area. And again, the first thing you want to do when you enter a fight is look at Birdie's TP and see if you can oil up. Because he now can crit on his fireballs, which is going to make this fight really fast. So we don't even need to use a fireball or anything. Uh, the worst thing that can happen on this fight is that somebody gets paralyzed and that somebody being Brad. So 
because it's usually a three turn fight, uh, depending on if people get paralyzed or whatever. We're going to bike back, do our last necessary area, which is the, um, um, which is getting buffalo in the toolbox. So these guys come at you in a set pattern every time. Um, again, like the uh, the other guys, they don't have a collision on the top of them. So if you can jump on top of them and move past them, they don't do anything. Uh, the, the thing you want don't want to do is let them uh, come, uh, run into you. learn the pattern that they take and uh, figure out your own way through it. These guys, like the other human enemies, you can just run away from and they disappear. I've never not been able to escape from these guys. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. You can save right there if you really want. This fight's not too difficult. So this is another uh, multi-person fight. So we're going to use our last uh, Teach Firebomb and TNT. got down so the oil oil up didn't happen. Uh, there's no reason to heal your party past this point because uh, after this fight we're just going to abandon them. You can't actually kill Buffalo in that fight. Uh, if you kill him before the uh, other people die, you're gonna, um, you can still continue on the fight. So you want to kill those other guys because they're easier to kill. Um, actually, the reason I was running out of joy is because I didn't pick up this joy right here. So you're supposed to pick up that when you enter the area, uh, but although you don't run out until just then. So now that we've gathered all the pieces, we're going to go to the, the final island. So now we're basically only going to be fighting with Brad. So it doesn't matter how low our party was when we finished the Buffalo fight. So he gets sweet cutscene right here. ahead. Probably going to be even more. Or, or behind. I'm trying to think if this beats anyone's time on the, on the leaderboard, so I thought it'd be funny. Not making anybody feel bad. But.
Okay, we have to fight Farty here, or whatever his name is. The, um, the worst thing that can happen is Brad gets withdrawal and he doesn't do any damage. But, but we just want to master this. Um, uh, be once Brad gets his arm chopped off, his best physical move is um, just P gun fist, which is just pressing A. Uh, the next thing we want to look out for now that we're on the final island is we have to have 16 uh, empty bottles uh, to fill with diesel fire bombs. So uh, make sure you look on this island and make sure you pick up every uh, pick up enough so you have 16. So we have eight. I still have to pick up eight more. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So now that I'm good. Uh, we're gonna use joy on Brad before this fight. So this is basically the easiest fight in the game. We just press A the whole time. Confirm through that. Make sure that you uh, try to kill him. Uh, I'm very confused why he's doing so little damage. I didn't even equip the, the Queen's Band. That's why. <laughs> that feels bad. So, you're supposed to have equipped the Queen's Bands when you bought them. This fight's gonna be actually a lot longer now that this is... Uh, yeah, now that that's gone. So I'm just gonna kinda struggle through this. And uh, again, sorry about that. And uh, if you ever, if you equip the Queen's Bands, this fight's like three turns and you just kind of destroy them, uh, Marty. Sorry about that. I'll go ahead and equip the Queen's Bands after this. Now that I remembered. <laughs> so even though it tells you to save here, like it gives you the the gives you the recommendation, do not save here. It just wastes time. Because there's no fight or there's one fight, there's not even a fight between here and the actual last save of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and equip this weapon I never equipped. So I have 16 bottles already, I don't need to pick up any more. Let's take another little break. So, we don't have our bike anymore, so we're just going to have to, to, to leg it.
So on the final island, there's a couple chances to pick up extra random rations. We're gonna go buy uh, one that I normally pick up, uh, but we can pick up this one if you're feeling like you like want to just complete a run. I would probably recommend to picking up on the first try, uh, first time you run, just because the rando can be kind of mean. Another one is up this, which isn't too far out of the way, so I normally grab it. So this is another fight we're just going to kind of mash A through. I forgot I wasn't joyed for this. You know what I do have though? I think I have another diesel fire pump for some reason. So no we don't. So we're just gonna we're just gonna kinda tough through this. We picked up so many uh, bottles for diesel fire bombs. We don't have to have. You want to have at least one joy, uh, just for the um, the waves of enemies you're gonna fight at the uh, end of the game. But other than that, you you don't really need joy for a rando. It's just nice to have. So if you use an extra joy throughout the route, it doesn't. It's not terrible. It's just faster to do it on uh, to use it on rando than it is to use it on the bullies because we didn't use a uh, joy during that fight. So we're gonna use another random ration. So we're gonna go through the route that hits the most amount of uh, these generators. Uh, each one of them gives you four fire bombs. So we're gonna pass four of them, which is 16. Uh, there's another Brando ration up there. Um, you can grab it, you can not. Uh, it's usually pretty far out of the way, so I just don't grab it. This is the only Brando ration you walk past for free, so I always pick it up. And you don't have to go to this generator. I usually do, but uh, you could... Sub Presumably have four less bottles and save a little bit of time, but it's usually just worth it to open your this far to just finish your run. So this is the last part of the game. At this point we're just gonna try to get through the run. Um, if we had, if I had brashed my joy right, I wouldn't be joyed for this, uh, this fighting your friends. Um, the, uh, the optimal way that to do it is to throw three diesel fire bombs and then joy so that you're joyed going into the waves of enemies that are coming next. Cause usually they'll die after one hit, uh, after a couple fire bombs. But right now we're just going to start doing the, um start doing the moves that we're going to be doing so now that brad has a whole new move set for this for this last battle uh burning head slide is the basically the only move that we're going to use and it does a bunch of damage and inflicts fallings which falling just makes him not act so that even saves even more time not only does it do the most amount of damage it also um uh saves time I'm gonna be safe and not use joy there so that I can 
start using fire bombs in this next fight, and maybe I'll save joy for just a tiny bit so I have some joy going into rando. And again, a lot of this game is just kind of rationing out your resources. Say I had an uh, extra firebomb uh, in the earlier fights, I can use it. If you don't want to use two firebombs on a certain fight, and you want to use it on a different fight, you can use it then. So I want to use Burning Head Slide at least to inflict Fallen on as many people as I can. Uh, unfortunately, we got stunned, which makes us not hacked. So here I'm going to use Joy, so that I can start killing these guys. And you see that Joy makes you take a lot less damage, which is what makes these last couple fights a joke. I don't know if you played a Joyless run of this game, like in, in a casual playthrough, but man, these last couple fights just freaking annoying. You just you like are chucking firebombs for like freaking 10 minutes. Keep using burn the slide. I think the worst thing these guys can do is I think one of them can avoid weird, which makes your math a little bit weird for the next uh, couple waves. Again, you want to flick Fallen on the most amount of people so that you, um, uh, so it saves the most amount of time in those directions. here because after this wave uh, is the Brando and we know that because this general right here he's always in the last wave so the Rando fight is actually surprisingly hard uh, Pretty much as hard as it is in the regular playthrough. Although uh, having dirty water, like uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, helps a lot because Rando is really, really weak to poison. It does like 1,500 damage a turn or a tick. So first thing I want to do, throw a dirty ball. Didn't inflict poison, which is bad. Still didn't inflict poison, so we're on the right track already. So he also can't be inflicted with Fallen. So what we want to do is inflict stun. So the charging head slam, or charging headbutt, inflicts stun. You also want to make sure that you're around a thousand health. He can do a bunch of damage in one go, and you just don't want to die and have to do all these freaking fights again. Uh, after you stun him once, you just want to throw some fire bombs. Uh, get him burning and get him uh, give the damage ticking. He'd be doing a, it'd be doing a lot more damage if he was um, if he was uh, poisoned as well. But we're just gonna kind of roll with it. And you're gonna have to use a lot of rando rations because he does do a, a lot of damage in this first phase. And uh, when his mass shatters like that, you know he changes phases. So you have to reapply poison if you have more dirty bottles, or you have uh, reapply burning from the uh, use of fire bombs. And he's basically the whole reason we pick up all of these fire bombs, just because of how mean he can be. So after you get him in this last phase here, where he's lost his mass, he's a lot less likely to attack you and do a bunch of damage. And he's 
takes a bunch of damage from burning. So, that's Lisa. Yeah, we, we, the time's not right now because we still have inputs going into this next section. But basically, that's the game. Uh, once you beat Rando, you're home free. You gotta watch the credits and just sit through uh, waiting for your PB run to die. <laughs> So, uh, we have the option to, for Buddy to, uh, to hug Brad, which is, I th which is a little bit slower. So as much as it feels bad, you gotta, you gotta spare him the hug. And again, uh, it's the second option, so you want to just keep pressing cancel. And again, you'll kind of memorize these cutscenes and what they're saying, and make sure that you're not pressing the wrong option. But I loved you. So gets to do the credits. Um, we want to keep holding right because we have to move right to uh, to get to the the shack that buddies in while we're enjoying mutant. Because we do have to move through this last uh, last uh, cutscene. So the t uh, we time on the last input, so uh, we do have to press right through this cutscene, and the uh, the time is going to be on the second dialogue box in this shack here. Or you can, you know, close enough if when you it's when you get back to the the main menu. everybody for watching uh, if you start speed running the game feel free to post your time there's you know a bunch of times on there right now that you know could be improved so don't feel bad posting uh, your first run or whatever I, that I did mine so uh, hope everybody enjoys it um, feel free to talk to me or any of the other runners if you want to to learn any more about the run uh, thanks everybody <laughs>